Hey esteemed viewers, this is Salman Safi welcoming you to your own channel Safi Maxed. In this video, I would like to further elaborate on some features of Schrodinger wave equation. The first thing, it is a non-relativistic equation and is applicable to non-relativistic both free and bound particles. Number two, the presence of iota at the left side of the equation shows that the equation supports oscillatory solutions. We know from classical physics that the sum of kinetic and potential energies constitute the Hamiltonian of a system. Therefore, in addition to the quantum mechanical operator iota h bar partial over partial t, we can use another operator for total energy in the form h operator equals p square operator divided by 2m plus v as a function of x and time where we stand for the potential energy if we substitute the operator forms of p square which is minus h bar square partial square over partial x squared into this equation we can rewrite the equation into this form Applying this equation to a wave function, we can write the result as h applied to psi minus h bar square divided by 2m partial square partial x square applied to psi and vxt multiplied with the wave function psi. The right side of this equation is exactly the right side of Schrodinger wave equation. So comparing the right side then in the notation of H, the Schrodinger wave equation can be expressed in a more simplified form like iota h bar partial over partial t applied to psi equals h operator applied to psi. So this is another way of representing Schrodinger wave equation. Now, a very important characteristic of Schrodinger wave equation, if the Hamiltonian operator H is not explicitly time dependent, or in other words, if the potential V as a function of X and T is in fact only the function of X and can be written as Vx, then such a system is called conservative system. For a conservative system, the wave function can be factorized, which means that it can be written as a product of two wave functions, one position dependent and the other time dependent. That is, we can write the wave function psi as a function of x in t equals chi as a function of t multiplied with tau as a function of t. That is, chi is as a function of position only and ta as a function of time only. Wave function in this form can be written only if the potential is time independent. Substituting this form of the wave function into Schrodinger wave equation, we can write it into this form. Now, since chi of x is time independent and tau of t is position independent. Therefore, I can change the position of chi with respect to time operator and the position of tau with respect to position operator, which means I can rewrite this equation into the form chi as a function of x multiplied with iota h bar partial root partial t applied to tau of t equals tau of t multiplied with h operator applied to chi of x. If we divide this equation with chi of t times tau of t, we can rewrite this equation as iota h bar 1 over tau of t d over dt applied to tau of t equals 1 over chi of x times h operator applied to chi of x. Now obviously left side of the equation is only time dependent and the right side is only position dependent. This form of the equation is physically valid only if both sides are independently equal to a single constant. 
which I represent here by capital E. With this choice of the constant, the above equation can be expressed in the form of two independent equations as for iota h bar 1 divided by tau of t times d over dt applied to tau of t equals e and the second one equation can be written as 1 over chi of x times h applied to chi of x equal to e. Now let us first solve the time equation 9 that is the time dependent equation. I can rewrite that equation as 1 over tau of t times d tau of t equals 1 divided by iota h bar e times dt. If I integrate this equation, I can write the result as log of tau of t equals minus 1 divided by iota h bar times e times t plus log of a, where a is in fact the integration constant. And arranging this equation again into this form that is taking a to the uh, left side of the equation and combining the two logs into a single term I can put the equation into this form and if I exponentiate this equation I can straight away put this into this form that is tau of t equals a times exponent minus iota divided by h bar e times t. This equation, that is equation 11, is the solution to time-dependent function, where the integration constant a is obtained from the values of the wave function a time t naught equal to zero. Now the position-dependent part can be put into this simplified form, that is h operator applied to chi of x equals e times chi of x. The solution chi of x to equation 12 is different for different choices of the potential v of x. So far as v of x is not specified, equation 12 cannot be solved anymore. Furthermore, equation 12 is second order in position. Therefore, our knowledge of the wave function at an initial position x0 and its gradient are sufficient to solve the equation to obtain the wave function at any other position or point. Now the total wave function psi x of t can be expressed by combining the solution to the time dependent part and the solution to the position dependent part. That is we can write the total wave function into the form psi x of t equals chi of x times exponent minus iota h bar multiplied with e times t where i have set the integration constant a equal to 1 